Welcome to Statistics 1. This first series of videos are going to cover frequency tables, measures of centrality, measures of dispersion, and various graphs. The first topic is frequency tables. We start off with a table of data as we see here, designated by the letter Z. And for the frequency table, we need to find the intervals, which is this little i button right here. So let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit more so we can get an idea of what the equation states. I states that it's greater than or equal to the high minus the low, parentheses, divided by k. Now I've added a little note here where it says k is equal to 2k greater than n, which basically says is you take 2 to the k power, and whatever is greater than the sample, that's your number. So we're going to start off with our high and our low numbers. So I'm going to start off with an equal sign, and I'm going to find the max, which is our high. Now just looking at the data, we can say, well, 20 is our high. But if the data is too large, this is a much easier way, a more precise way of doing it, which, again, which we see is 20. So we look at our min, doing it the same way, and it looks like it's going to be 4. And no surprise, 4. All right, now for k to the second power. Equal sign 2, or excuse me, 2 to the k power. And carrot hat is found by pressing shift and then the 6 button. Shift plus 6. So I'm going to start off with 3. That gets me 8. Well, how many do I have here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's still less than it. So let's try 4. 16. Okay, so that's definitely greater than 10. So my number is 4. So k is equal to 4. All right, so I'm going to plug this into the equation. Actually, let me erase this, replace that with a 4. So my interval is i is going to equal parentheses my high minus my low, close parentheses, divided by 4. Now I can type that in, or I can push the number, but I'm going to go ahead and show you that you can type it in as well by pushing the 4 here, whichever, it doesn't really matter. Give you some time to uh, type that up. And then we push enter, which gets me an interval width of 4. Okay. So we start off and say, okay, well, my frequency table is going to be 4 to 7.9, 8 to 11.9, 12, to 15.9, and then 16 to 20. I put the point 0.9 in there just to show that it's everything up to 8, and I'm going to include the 20 because there is a 20 in there on this table. Okay. And now what we would do is we would count. And the fastest way of doing that is I'm just going to take the data, whoops, excuse me, and do an auto sort. I'm going to go smallest to largest. Okay, so how many go within the range between 4 and 8? 1, 2, 3, looks like 3. Um, looks like 1, 2, 3, 4 on the 8 to 12. 12 to 15 looks like 2. And then 1 on that, uh, 16 to 12. So 3. 4 is 7, 
8 or 7, 9, and 10. So that gives me a grand total of 10 for my n. Okay. So if we wanted to, let's graph the data. So I'm going to insert my column chart. And there we have it. A graphical representation of our frequency distribution. This is particularly useful when you have count data or you have data with a large range and you're just trying to group it into a meaningful set of graphs to help people understand. So that is the frequency table. Another approach is to use what we call a histogram. There's two ways of doing that, either through Excel or through Megastat. I'm going to go through the Megastat uh, steps first in the next video.